Welcome back to the studio, everyone. I'm Carly Smith here with Rob Washburn for another week of three things to watch. And Rob, week nine of the season was entertaining, to say the least. We saw big offensive performances, winning streaks extended, an overtime thriller, and much more on display. So now, as we set our gaze forward to week 10 and November football, Rob, the expectation is the same. Get ready for some intense, hard-fought CAA battles, starting with our first thing to watch, William and Mary at U Albany, the Great Danes, who are four and one in league play, are coming off of an offensive explosion last Saturday, led by Reese Poffenbarger, who threw for 324 yards and two touchdowns in the Great Danes' win over Maine. They'll be faced with an incredibly tough challenge as the Tribe, who are three and two in CAA play, travel north after a 31 to 28 win over Monmouth last week. Coach Mike London told us this week his team will need to play their best football in all three phases of the game to get the road win. Rob, why is this such a key and competitive matchup? Carly, it's a big matchup for both teams because a win on Saturday will keep them in the race for a CAA championship and strengthen their resume for an FCS mm -hmm. playoff berth. Mm -hmm. Now, while both squads have plenty of talent on offense, I want to focus on two of the top defenses in the nation and specifically four elite pass rushers. William Mary leads the CAA and ranks in the top 10 in FCS in total defense and scoring defense, allowing just 18 points and 285 yards per game. The tribe has recorded 22 sacks and 43 tackles for loss, and more than half of them have come from All-Americans John Pius and Nate Lynn, who have combined for 15 and a half sacks and 10 quarterback hurries. On the other side, U Albany is allowing just 20 points and 321 yards per game, and they rank fourth in FCS against the run. The Great Danes have registered 27 sacks and 57 tackles for loss, with over half coming from Anton Junkage and A.J. Simon, who have teamed up for 18 sacks and 15 quarterback hurries. The pressure these four guys are able to produce up front forces quick decisions by the quarterback, which can lead to rush throws and turnovers, and both teams have quality players at linebacker and in the secondary. It should be a fun afternoon watching these guys work. And they're going to go to work, that's for sure. Let's hear more from William and Mary's Mike London, and you all, but he's Greg Catuso. They got a great defense. I mean, they're, 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 they like to challenge you in all regards, and, and I, I like how they play, and um, we have great respect for William and Mary, and we're really, really excited about uh, having this game Saturday. Another really good football team once again um, demonstrated performance on the field. Um, you know, they defensive, they got, you know, two guys on the edge that are they're, they're electric. I mean, they're really, really good. Tune into this one at one o'clock on Saturday on Flow Football. Okay, moving on to our second thing to watch, Villanova, who's four and one in the CAA and riding a three game winning streak, heads to Durham to face a two and three New Hampshire squad. The Wildcats are going at it for the first time since 2019. Villanova enters this game with the offensive player of the week and quarterback Connor Watkins. Watkins leads the FCS with 18.7 yards per completion this season and has a wealth of talented playmakers around him. Now, speaking of talent, New Hampshire is the top-ranked offense in the league. The general of that offense is quarterback Max Brosmer, who leads the CAA in passing. Now get this, all of New Hampshire's losses this year have come down to just seven points in regulation. So this is a team who is capable of beating anyone at any time. Rob, how do you expect this battle to play out on Saturday? Yeah, Carly, since you set the stage, let's take a deeper dive on two of the top quarterbacks in the CAA and the different ways they're able to move their teams down the field. Now, as you mentioned, Villanova's Connor Watkins leads the nation in yards per completion, and he loves taking shots down the field to speedy receivers Ray John Pringle, Jaron Hayek, and Jalen Sanchez. In eight games this season, he has connected on 30 passes of 20 yards or longer, including 13 pass plays of at least 40 yards. He can also run with 244 yards and a team-high six rushing TDs. Now, Brosber is number one in FCS with more than 2,600 passing yards and 23 touchdowns. He's thrown for over 300 yards six times with multiple TD tosses in seven of the eight games. He loves to spread the ball around with six different receivers with at least 26 catches and over 250 yards. Both of these guys are smart, experienced, and make very few mistakes, and both will play a big role in the outcome of Saturday's game. Can't wait for it. For more on the matchup, let's hear from Villanova's Mark Ferrante and New Hampshire's Rick Santos. We haven't faced New Hampshire, I don't think, since 2019. So we've never seen Max live, but he's uh, he's an excellent player watching him on film. Like I said, gets the ball out fast, knows where to go with the ball, has high completion percentage, and uh, he has some really good targets out there. And Lauby, as we just discussed, is probably his number one go-to guy. 
Connor Watkins, their, their QB. He, you know, he's similar to Kasim. He can make every single throw on the field. Uh, I think they lead the conference in um, yards per completion. So they're, they're, it's bombs away for them. They're, they're tossing it all over. You know, they have a couple of wideouts that have been here forever, it seems like, uh, in, in Hayak and Pringle. Um, you know, so those guys can do a really good job run after the catch. They also have the ability to blow the top off the coverage. Kickoff is at 1 o'clock on Saturday. Tune in on Flow Football. All right, our third thing to watch takes us to Newark, Delaware. The Blue Hens, who are 5-0 and at the top of the league, host Elon, a team that's tied for third in the league at 4-1. and Now, viewers, let me help you out. In order not to miss out on any of the action, you'll need to tune in right at kickoff, like literally right at kickoff, 1 o'clock p.m. on Flow Football, because Delaware has the ability to start fast. And by fast, I mean fast. In their last <laughs> win against Towson, they sprinted out to a 38 to nothing lead in the first half. Elon knows this. They're coming off of the bye week and have had extra time to prepare for Saturday. The Phoenix can get it done on the ground and in the air. Rob, so much firepower on both sides, but who are you king in on? Yeah, Carly, Delo has been absolutely dominant over the last two weeks, outscoring its opponent 76-3 in the first half. The Blue Hens' offense has piled up over 1,100 yards in those games, and their defense has only given up one touchdown in the past 14 quarters. Now, last Saturday, talented running back Marcus Yarns accumulated 168 all-purpose yards and found the end zone five times, including four TDs in the opening 15 minutes. For Elon to slow the Delaware attack down, not only will it need a strong defensive effort, but the Phoenix will need to control the ball behind the running of Jalen Hampton, who had 136 yards against the Hens a year ago, and get a clean game from quarterback Matthew Downey, who threw for 282 yards and three touchdowns in his last outing against Monmouth. In last year's game between the two teams, Delaware started fast with a touchdown on its opening drive, but Elon didn't allow a point for the rest of the day, controlled the ball for 37 minutes, and earned a 27-7 victory. Now, will the Phoenix be able to execute a similar game plan, or will the Blue Hens keep rolling toward the CAA title? That's a great question. Now, let's hear what Delaware's Ryan Cardi and Elon's Tony Trishiani had to say leading up to kickoff. They're so sound. They're talented, uh, kind of at all levels uh, on offense and defense, and um, and obviously have the capability to put it up both ways on you know on offense. You can you can win in the air, and they can win on the ground, and so. Um, you know, it's something that, that gives you uh, fits as a defensive coordinator, as an offensive coordinator. Um, you know, we're, we're ready uh, for a, a big time, big time battle. They're hot on both sides of the ball. You know, it, it really doesn't matter who the quarterback is, I don't think, whether it's O'Connor or Marker. You know, um, they've got so many skilled, explosive skilled players around him. You know, they can they can throw it short and, and take it long, you know, about almost half their yards. Uh, receiving our yards after the catch, you know, so um, he's got, he's got some talent to, they've got some talent to distribute the ball to. Don't miss out on this one. Kickoff is at one o'clock on Flow Football. Plenty of other exciting games to be played all around the league this week. Campbell travels to Chapel Hill to face North Carolina. North Carolina A&T plays host to Towson. Maine welcomes Hampton and Mammoth will play an always competitive matchup against Stony Brook in West Long Branch. November football is here, folks, and the stakes couldn't get any higher for results, recaps, and more. Make sure you visit CAAfootball.com and follow along on social media at CAAfootball.